Next piece I'm going to go after is part number 15, right here. That is the ratchet. Now this little piece is going to present a variety of challenges. Let's go and take a look at the detail on it. It has 24 teeth around the outside, 60 degree teeth. It is only uh, 330 seconds, so 93 thick. That's about, what, two and a quarter millimeters. Got a square hole through the center, about the same squareness as the thickness. And, uh, you know, other than having 24 60-degree teeth and a square hole in it, this is a relatively easy part. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of different approaches for cutting those teeth. And I think it's uh, going to be pretty clear once it falls off the print, just like everything else. I got a blow up of this print on the other bench, so let's go take a look at that. All right, I prepared a cross section of this particular ratchet in my CAD system, and we can do this a couple of different ways. One of the ways is to orient the part. Well, it's going to be completely round, so there's really no orienting it other than making sure that it's running true in your indexer, and that's how I'm going to do this in a spin indexer. You can do it with a dovetail cutter. Make sure you find the tool that is acceptable for the location that will allow you to do that. Find the one tooth of this whole assembly that will be presenting itself in a horizontal parallel to the bed format and just use your cutter accordingly. If you don't have one of these cutters, well, you can use, I'm going to use this little guy right here. This is a snap tap threading bar. And for all you guys are going to be asking what the number is right there. This is not a paid promotion. Hashtag not paid. So anyway, there you go. Nice little bar. I use this for thread interpolation, thread milling on my CNC. It's a great little tool. I am going to use that tool coming down this way, spinning like a cutter. <laughs> like a cutter. And I'm going to pick up this tooth right here. And you can see how that's going to be quite effective to cut the gears as well. I'm going to form a flat, flat and a 60, but I'm going to form it at a 30 and 30 projection accordingly. And we'll just index the part every time I want to make another cut. Just come back in, burp, do it. Anyway, it's going to be real fragile all the way around the edge. If the tool is not sharp, if it's dragging, if there's any back contact on your tool, these teeth are going to look absolutely no bueno. I'm telling you, horrible. So the prep of this particular blank is no big deal. I'm going to cut it to a 325 diameter, leave it on a length of material so I can put it in the indexer and also put it in a B-block, stand it up and put that little square hole in the center. I am not going to bore you with the prep of this because it's just a straight turning and drilling operation. We'll pick this up when this hits the spin indexer. Now when I put this piece up in the machine, it is going to cut beautifully. These are the teeth that I just experimented with with the cutter. And you can see how it forms the shelf that it's supposed to form without the burr. Now that's what we're going to talk about right now, the burr. I'm going to try to get this focused here. You can see how this one raises up. And how this one raises up as well. Let's see if we can get a better look at that. All right. See how the material displaces around the cut? I'm looking right here. That would indicate that you got some drag going on with the tool. This one is just atrocious. And when you get around to the one that was relieved correctly, you've got almost no raise, no elevation, no displacement of the material. That's what you're looking for. If you have a horrific burr and the diameter of your part increases drastically over the burr, well, then you've got the backside of the tool is rubbing. And I spent some time relieving the tool. Now that is really hard to get in focus, guys. I apologize for that. I did spend some time relieving the insert that I've selected, so it's got a really narrow edge. And that tool is not specifically designed to rotate anyway. It's designed to stay stationary while the part rotates, so the part falls away. If you're going to use a tool other than how it was designed, make sure it's going to perform as intended and that it's safe to do so. All right, let me prepare a blank. We come back and get real. The blank is prepared. That is at 325 diameter. That's about 8 millimeters. And knowing the profile of the tool that you're going to use, come down and bump the part with the tool. Zero everything out. And then do your math and bring the center of that cutter down to where you need it. 
I'm going to do three test cuts uh, at zero, minus 15, and plus 15 because the 24 teeth require 15 degree spacing. And I'm going to look for the distance between the cuts to establish my depth. Let's do it. It may be a little hard to see, but this is the gap that I'm looking to set. The reflective section right there, that is the distance between the cuts. I'd like to get that relatively sharp, but still leave some material there for integrity. I'd like to change the camera angle, too, so you can get a better shot at this. Let's see what we can have. Well, the fringe benefit of having an extended process on anything is the camera jumps out after a set period of time. And since I'm looking at the part and not the camera, this time, <laughs> excuse me, this time, I had no idea it kicked out until I came back to review it. Anyway, I'm going to make a finished pass on this. These crowns, uh, crests of these teeth are just a little bit too big. I would like to bring them down a little bit. Now, in the interest of not boring you to tears, I'll do that off camera and come back when these are just about five thousandths. I'll be back. This is really hard to film. Everything is so reflective. Sorry about that. This is the final product out of the rotary indexer. Boy, that is really getting hard to see that. You can see how the top tooth right here. Let's pick one. That one right there. Get the inside face to aim right directly at the hole. That's a good thing. I will face this off to clean that up. Make sure the tool is extremely sharp. This is going to be a real dog to try to deburr. You can see that the faceting, the reflected light on top of the teeth is real symmetrical all the way around. That's a good thing. This will not be very fragile when it's in place. And this is the mechanism that will accept the, there's a little arm on this machine that oscillates back and forth with the head. And as it oscillates, it kicks the tooth and then comes back for another one and kicks the tooth and comes back for another one. And this is what ultimately moves the table across the tool bit. So this will be looking at the machine on the right hand side where a dial would normally be. That's where you're going to have this little guy. Alright, I'm going to clean it up, put it back in the machine, put it in a V-block, make that center hole square, cut it off. Call it a day. Part is now trapped in the V-block in the machine and the brooch is set. Now for anybody that's going to say, gee, how do you keep that brooch still while you're broaching? Well, if you don't have a collar that goes from your spindle to your outer quill that can lock together, there's pretty much only one way to do this. Uh, two ways. Put the machine in low range, run it down to the slowest RPM you can, and that should be sufficient for most lightweight broaching operations. The brake handle on most mills also has a cam position, a lot of people don't know about, that if you extend the brake to its full on or full push spot and then pull the brake away from the machine, it should cam and lock in that position as well. So I just laid a block up against mine and aligned it with the jaw. So here we go. This is going to say 100 by 100 square. That's about two and a half millimeters. That is about a two millimeter brooch and a two millimeter hole. I also have a go gauge. Very handy. Here we go.
Depth is good, profile's good. Let's take it out, clean it up, cut it off, and hopefully not roll all those teeth over when we take it to wood. Back to the lathe. The part is back in the lathe. Let's part it off. I'm going to come in from behind it to establish the thickness with a very sharp little tool as not to roll the teeth over. I don't feel like deep burn 24 teeth times two faces. All right, guys, now in all fairness, this is what you don't get to see half the time. This is just a piece of plain uh, cardboard, and it's the back of a notepad that I save. I impregnate the cardboard with metal polish, so it turns into this black slurry after a couple of wipes. And this is the actual gear that I was just doing. So I've put this across 400 emery ever so gently, and now I'm just going to go in circles. And for all you angler detectives out there, we're going to go on to figure eight here, take off the high spots. Like gradually decreasing pressure, and you can see what we got here is absolute, it's a mirror. I'll flip it over, do the other side, and then we'll give it an alcohol wash, then we'll put it on the bench for inspection. Gentle pressure off. And that should also be in there, which it is. Okay, let's shoot it with some alcohol, get it over on the bench, take a look. It's a great way to polish your part. Well, I gotta say, I really enjoyed doing this one. I knew that it was going to be very unconventional. And that is extremely small. I'm gonna put that back on that piece of uh, wire and store that for now. But I was definitely looking forward to that. It takes me back to the days when I actually used to make watch crown dies for stamping uh, watch crowns out of brass pellets. That's where I started my apprenticeship in a company that made watch components. So this is like going home again. I wish I had the machines I had there in this shop. That would be awesome. Anyway, there you go. 24 tooth gear, 325 in diameter. That's about 8 millimeters, 60 degrees, about a 5 thousandths land between each tooth with a 0.1 square in the center. That's about 2.5 millimeters through the middle. I am very pleased with the way this came out. A little bit of trial and error on the insert to get that to not swell up as I cut. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment line. I'll try to get to you. Thank you very much for coming. I hope that you're happy and well wherever you are in the world. It's Joe Pye at Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. Smiling again. I'm out.